Hello and welcome to Health Watch. I'm Dr. Vince Yelmi. On behalf of the physicians and staff at Everett Community Hospital, I'd like to welcome you to this segment. Today we're going to be talking about acute knee injuries, and we'll be right back after this message. And welcome back to Health Watch. Today we're going to be talking about acute knee injuries, and as our guest we have Dr. Joy Long of Lancaster Orthopedic Group. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. Uh, Joy, we talked about um, knees before in the past, and it's, it's, it's such a common problem that I think it's worthy of going over what, what are we doing now with them, what, what can you offer both acutely and chronically, but let's talk about it today, primarily with acute knee injury. People, this is a, not an uncommon problem. We see it on the sports field all the time. Uh, just, just, we always talk when we do these shows, we talk a, bit, a little bit about what, what is the knee and you know, what are the components of it. So maybe we we'll start there and you can kind of walk into what happens when it goes wrong. Right. Well, we brought a model today, and um, the femur is the thigh bone, the tibia is the shin bone, and you have your patella or your kneecap in front. But a lot of times when we're talking about a knee injury, we're talking about the soft tissue um, structures. And so uh, the meniscus is a cartilage. It's um, almost like a, a piece of tissue in between the, the two bones that acts as a cushion. And a lot of times when people say, I've torn my cartilage, that's what they're talking about. And, and that's a, a really common reason for people to have an arthroscopy of the knee. And it's a pretty common injury, usually from a twist um, of the knee. And you just get a little bit of a sheer um, injury to that structure. Certainly then, what holds the bones together are the ligaments, mostly. Um, you have four main ligaments in your knee. Um, the cruciate ligaments are the ones people talk about the most with sports injuries. You have your anterior cruciate ligament or ACL. Then there's one that's not talked about quite as much called the posterior cruciate ligament or PCL. Your medial collateral ligament or MCL and then your lateral collateral ligament or LCL. And with those four ligaments that gives your knee a lot of stability. So if you tear a ligament then you're going to have some instability in the knee. The articular cartilage is the cartilage that is attached to the end of the bone. Oftentimes damage to the articular cartilage is more of a chronic issue like arthritis, but you can get an acute injury to the articular cartilage where a piece is chipped off or fragmented off. Then the other structures around the knee that are a little bit more external, external would be the tendons, so the patellar tendon and the quadricep tendon. Those are structures that attach muscles to bone, so your quad muscles would attach by the quadricep tendon. Yeah. It's it amazing, you know, I always think about joy is, 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 is the, the amount of pressure that we have on our knees, um, the vital function that they, that we take it for granted a lot, but, mm -hmm. but in fact, um, uh, you know, you, when you, every step, every run, every jump, um, the, the absorption that this structure has to take and be functional all the time is, is quite awesome when you think about it. Absolutely. And then over through your lifespan, it has yes. got to last through to your, uh, to your elder years. And, and so we're going to be talking about some acute injuries that can occur with that. But again, going back to, we're going to talk about prevention maybe at the end, but um, it, does, it does speak to keeping your weight under some kind of control because every 10 pound increase, I forgot what the tonnage was to the knee, it's, it's fairly appreciable. Right. Well, the, the pressure, the force between your kneecap and your thigh bone is 10 times your body weight when you go up and down stairs. So you can imagine, you know, what that is if you're running and jumping as well. Yeah. Um, but a lot of knee injuries are really a twisting motion. So whether it's a soccer injury where you're pivoting and, you know, you're, you're changing directions quickly and you plant your foot and your knee twists, that's a pretty common. Um, but that can happen just as easily when you're walking the dog and the dog takes off yeah. after a squirrel. So, um, but those kinds of acute injuries are, you know, potential injuries to the ligaments or the meniscus. Sometimes it can be really hard to tell. If you're seeing a person on a sideline before a lot of swelling has occurred, it can be a little easier to examine them and tell exactly where they're sore and whether or not a ligament is loose. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the time the doctor isn't there right when you injure your knee and you're seeing them a couple of days later after it's swollen up. So it can be a little bit more difficult to tell is it sore directly in one spot. It might be sore all over because now it's swollen and bruised. And it can be harder to tell if the knee is loose because it is swollen and stiff. So uh, a lot of times we're not entirely sure what all is torn or damaged and further imaging is, is, is useful. X-rays are always a good place to start just to make sure there's not a, a chip fracture. fracture. Yeah. But most of the time with a knee injury, an MRI is what gives us the most information because we can see the cartilage and the ligaments on that. Let, let's just go back a little bit if I can, just to, you know, the, uh, we, we all see it on, on television. I mean, with the, you know, particularly in, in, in 
football, I guess, where we see it more commonly, um, and the trainer runs out and they're going to the knee and they're doing the kind of the maneuvers you're, yeah. you're talking about. So that's, you know, you get a professional that makes those observations. Um, most of us aren't professional athletes, so that when we injure ourselves, it's kind of, uh, having done that in my youth, I remember I wasn't even aware, of, boy, that hurts a lot, but I'm not sure what happened until right. it really swells up. Um, you know, kind of what do what can we do initially? Right. I mean, really, uh, that, that helps you to kind of define that and what should we be putting on? If you really think you've traumatized your knee, what's the immediate therapy that we should do? So certainly the RICE philosophy, rest, ice, compression, and elevation works for any acute joint injury. Um, you want to get off of it and put a bag of ice, maybe wrap an ace wrap for some compression to help keep swelling from occurring, and then elevate. Um, uh, that helps to keep the swelling down. Swelling can really um, cause more pain, more stiffness, and make it harder to examine the joint. Usually when you're seeing those athletic trainers run out onto the field, what, what they're doing is they're, they're palpating around the knee to see where it's tender. So if it's tender on the, what we call joint line, right on the meniscus, then that's concerning for a meniscus tear. But they're also um, stressing the knee. So they'll twist, they'll twist the knee um, laterally and then also try to pull forward and backward to see if there's any looseness in those ligaments. That's great if you have somebody to examine you, but if you're just kind of walking the dog and you twist your knee and you go home and it's really swollen, things that are concerning are if your knee feels like it's going to give out on you or if you feel like it's getting stuck, it catches or yeah. locks on you. Those are symptoms that would at least um, make me want to evaluate it further. If it's just a little sore and it's generalized and it seems to be getting better already by the next day, you're not having any of those what we call mechanical symptoms where it's catching and giving out. And it's not unreasonable to give it a few days to a week to see if it's just a strain or a mild sprain that will improve on its own. But generally speaking, a knee that swells up right away, um, won't support your weight or gives out, that should be evaluated. Yeah. Yeah, we talk about you know the, the sprain. We're kind of thinking about ankle sprains, and we all know about those. But you don't think about the sprains of the knees are kind of a whole different animal. Right. Um, sprain generally implies an injury to a ligament. So we grade the sprains. Grade one is a simple stretch of the ligament. Grade two is a partial tear, and then grade three is a complete rupture. A lot of times when you're talking about an ACL tear, people call it a tear. They don't say it's a sprain, but officially it's a complete sprain or a, a grade three sprain. The medial collateral ligament is probably the most commonly injured ligament around the knee and that's usually a sprain. It doesn't usually tear the whole way through. It will frequently tear part of the fibers but since it's a very broad ligament it will usually heal with time but it can give some what we call laxity or looseness in the joint initially while it's healing. Um, so, so the take-home message, at least acutely for JQ Public, is if you uh, if you see a lot of swelling, instability, clicking sounds, or whatever else, immobility, that's you, you got to see a doctor. Otherwise, it, you might want to at least temporize it for for you a could day. Try it for a couple of days. Okay. Yeah. All right. We're going to take a break. Come back and talk about when it comes to you, what you need to do, and what we need to do to evaluate. And we'll be right back after this message. And welcome back to Health Watch. We were talking to Dr. Joy Long about um, acute knee injuries. We kind of uh, got that initial, I've, I've hurt myself, and now um, you know this is really something I need to have taken care of. Um, they, and they up in, end up in your office. Um, you know, How do you evaluate them at that point in time? They may or may not have swelling, pain. It's a couple days hence. Um, what are you looking for? Well, I'm going to do the same basic exam I talked about that the athletic trainer would do on the field for a soccer player or a football player. Sometimes it's a little harder a couple days later because you're stiff and sore and swollen. Most of the time I'll order x-rays. In my office, I'm able to do that in the office, which is nice. And oftentimes we'll end up ordering an MRI, especially if the patient does have those mechanical symptoms, the knee has been locking and giving out on them. Um, in the meantime, while we're waiting for that MRI, I'll often um, have patients continue with the ice, the an potentially an anti-inflammatory medication. If I notice instability on the exam, then I'll often prescribe a brace and potentially even crutches for support. You don't injure um, it more. So that, right, and, yeah. to, and to give your knee a break, if you don't want it to continue to swell. Right. Um, once I see the patient back and they've had their MRI scan, then the MRI will really show us pretty clearly if there's a tear in your ACL or a sprain in the MCL or a tear in the cartilage. And it, um, 
the, the treatment then depends on exactly what the injury is. Just so stop. I, I always I would like to mention at the time, we talk about CAT scans and MRIs and kind of comparable studies, but uh, we always, in fact, point out that the MRI is much better for soft tissues as opposed right. to bone. Right. If you're just looking at bone, a CAT scan is probably your better, but, but looking right. at osteopor are these types of uh, issues with uh, uh, the soft tissues you describe, it's, it's really yeah. MRIs, and the pictures are quite dramatic. They're very good now, yes. They've become, they're, they're clearer and clearer, and uh, it, it's, it's a non-invasive test, which is nice uh, in general. Y you don't need any kind of medication or IV to have it done, um, and, uh, and it is a little bit time consuming, but they are getting faster and faster. So. Yeah. Um, so if I see a patient and they have basically an MCL sprain, a partial tear in their medial collateral ligament, then I'm likely to put them in a brace, um, use crutches for a little while and actually start them on some physical therapy to get the knee moving again and strengthen the muscles around the knee and again those usually heal on their own. Um, however if there's a large meniscus tear or an ACL tear then that's a little bit more of a discussion. It depends on the patient's demands. You can certainly live with a meniscus tear and you can even live with an ACL tear but it means that you have to modify your activities. So if you're someone who had a freak accident, you know, climbed up on the sofa to kill a spider and you fell down and you tore your ACL, but that's, you don't normally play sports, you wouldn't necessarily have to have a surgery to fix your ACL. You may just want to wear a brace if you're going to go hiking or do something a little bit more involved. Hmm. On the other hand, if you're an 18-year-old soccer player who wants to play for four more years in college, then you're going to need a really stable knee. So if your ACL is torn or you have a large meniscus tear, then you're likely going to want to have that addressed surgically. And it's important to uh, do that sooner rather than later to avoid further injury to the knee in those patients. Um, sometimes we do still do a little bit of physical therapy beforehand, especially if the patient is really stiff or really swollen, because you, you don't want to proceed uh, with a surgery, which your body will perceive as yet another injury when the knee is still stiff and swollen. So you want to get the swelling down, get the range of motion back, and then um, fix whatever the problem is. Do, do you ever, um, you, you can throw, uh, we could also do arthroscopies on these, and I know in the past that was our poor man's, I guess, MRI at the time. Right. Because um, uh, the doctor had the ability to go in and look around and, and tell you exactly, now we can do that radiologically. Do you ever have to do that as a, as a prodrome to your surgery? There are sometimes cases where the MRI is not conclusive and uh, a lot of times then I'll start with some physical therapy to kind of get a sense if the patient is going to get better and if they're still exhibiting symptoms that are mechanical in nature, they still feel like you know, there's a lot of pain, there's still a lot of swelling, then it's still reasonable to do what's called a diagnostic arthroscopy. But I'll tell you, with MRIs getting more and more uh, detailed, it's becoming less and less necessary to do just a pure diagnostic arthroscopy. There are some times when there's enough damage to the knee that a staged procedure is necessary, like there might be something like a completely displaced meniscus tear that's actually flipped out of position in the knee. Those actually have to be addressed relatively quickly. So if someone has a very displaced meniscus tear and also multiple ligament injuries, sometimes it's better to go in and fix the thing that has to be fixed right away, but then wait to do the big surgery until the knee has recovered a little bit. So there are times when we do a staged procedure. We, we didn't talk about much about the patella, but uh, and you alluded to the fact that occasionally you can have a patella or a tendon tear. How is, would, that, would that dictate you, you to do something more rapidly than maybe you would have right. normally? Those, those definitely <coughs> need to be fixed sooner rather than later. A tendon, like we said, is attached to muscle, so a tendon tear will often retract. So if you tear this tendon and the quadricep muscle is up here, it's going to pull the tendon in t out of position. So if you wait too long to fix that, then it's hard to stretch the muscle back out to where it belongs. So yes, if there's an actual tendon tear of the quadricep or patellar tendon, then those usually are fixed pretty quickly. You can pretty much tell that on your physical exam? Those are <coughs> usually pretty clear because the patient can't straighten their leg on their own. So that's a pretty, it's a pretty good sign. A pretty good they, sign. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's a little more subtle. You're not sure that they can't straighten it just because they're in pain or it's swollen. An MRI is pretty clear for a tendon tear though. Okay. Um, so now you're getting to the point where you know you got to start recommending 
what surgical treatment, if any, you know, yes, I think you need to have surgery. Um, do you, um, is there a timing aspect to that? What do you, you know, uh, you kind of alluded to the fact that you don't want to injure, you don't want to go back in too soon, but then again, you don't want to have injury. What would be the normal time span before? It's often a few weeks <coughs> um, from the time of injury until the time of surgery, unless it's something like we talked about where a complete rupture of a tendon or a displaced meniscus tear, in which case you'd want to fix that as soon as possible. But a lot of times it's a few weeks, again, to let the swelling go down and to get the range of motion back. The stiffer a knee is before a surgery, the harder it's going to be to get that range of motion back after the surgery. And most of these procedures are done arthroscopically, which um, you were talking about with the camera and relatively small incisions. The complete tendon ruptures, those are usually open procedures, so there is a bigger scar for that. Okay, well, we're gonna take a break. I wanna come back and then let's talk about the arthroscopic procedures you're doing. And we'll be right back after this message. And we've been talking to Dr. Joy Long about acute knee injuries and we've kind of got to the point where you need to do something. Uh, and uh, getting that patient prepper and, and I, you know, having had a new, few knee surgeries in my day. Uh, but it, it really, uh, the one thing I'm impressed with is, like you say, maintaining um, function because uh, you atrophy pretty quickly. Um, and that's, you know, talk about the old therapies and new therapies now where we keep people very active, even going through total knees and the like. But uh, so you get your patient and um, you're going to have surgery. It's a couple weeks after the surgery. How do you, uh, let's just talk about the, uh, your arthros arthroscopic approach to these things and, and what, what, what people could expect. Well, for a simple meniscus tear, um, those surgeries are relatively straightforward. Um, people can expect to be on crutches for a few days, and um, really, I start all of my knee arthroscopy patients, whether it's an ACL reconstruction or just a meniscus, I start them on physical therapy within two to three days. And it's exactly like you said, it's, it's really changed in philosophy over the years, but atrophy of the muscles or weakening of the muscles happens so quickly that we don't want you just sitting and doing nothing for two weeks because then you're going to take all that much longer to get your strength yeah. back. And since we do things through relatively small incisions now, we're not as worried about the incisions themselves having to be kept still um, for a long period of time. So. Arthroscopic procedures can be done usually with just two small incisions in the front of the knee. A camera goes in one incision and then instruments through the other and in that way you can trim out a torn meniscus, you can um, smooth cartilage um, injuries. So those are the quicker recovery. When you're talking about an ACL reconstruction, there is still an incision for the graft and to, to put the new ACL in because ACL reconstructions are actually making a new ligament. So even though the incisions are still relatively small, it's a much bigger procedure. Those patients are usually kept in a brace, sometimes for a month or even more, and they're usually on crutches for at least a couple of weeks. But again, the physical therapy starts quite quickly to really get the joint moving, keep the swelling down, and start working on getting the muscle strength back. Yeah, talk about ACL. Do, what kind of you know? I've heard all kinds of things about uh, what inst what 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 you use to reconstruct. Uh, we talk about cadaver issues and those types of things. What what are you actually reduce, reproducing that with? So, one of the most common things to use is what's called the is the patellar tendon, the tendon in the front of the knee, and you can either use your own <clears throat> or one from a cadaver from a dead person. And a lot of people are um, using the patient's own tendon, especially in the younger folks, because um, if you have a 17-year-old patient, then you have a 17-year-old tendon, uh, whereas if you have a cadaver tendon, it might be 40 or 50-year-old person I that really thought about passed it this away. Yeah. So um, the tissue itself may be a little stronger, plus it also will heal in faster because it's your own tissue. So a lot of times in the younger uh, folks will, will use their own tendon, but if you're talking about a 40-year-old patient who you know, just wants to get back to doing a, uh, some skiing a couple times a year and a few other activities. Um, a lot of times I will use an allograft because it's a little less surgery to the patient's knee. And a lot of times the age of the graft is very similar. And it is no rejection pass because it's a, it's a kind of it's a bland. A, right, there's no blood vessels right. going to the ACL right. or the graft. So it's not like a liver or a kidney where you're where you're really concerned about rejection. And it's better than an artificial substance of some sort. We've tried, they've tried various artificial su uh, substitutes. Um, there was one that was actually Gore-Tex many years back, but uh, those 
those didn't do too well. So. So. The, the, uh, the, the posterior uh, cruciate, you mentioned that a couple of times, and, I'm, and boy, this is layman's knowledge, but uh, I've heard even sports injury saying, gee, that's just not something you don't really have to worry about that much. It's not a big a deal. A posterior cruciate ligament injury usually occurs when the knee is bent and there's a direct force to the shin. So it's either a fall on a flex knee or oftentimes it's a dashboard injury from a car accident. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, if it's just the PCL that's torn, a lot of times the patient doesn't have symptomatic instability. The physician might be able to feel the looseness in the ligament, but it's not as important for the running, jumping, cutting, pivoting type activities like the ACL. When the ACL is torn, every time you plant your foot, the knee will shift slightly, and that gives a lot of trouble if you're trying to play a sport. Um, the PCL isn't quite as important for that motion, so it doesn't usually cause a big problem. It's also a, it's also thicker. The PCL is oh, a okay. thicker ligament, so it's less likely to tear. So a partial tear of that is probably not as consequential as right. the injury. And if it's only a partial tear, it's it's incredibly <coughs> rare for that to ever need a surgery. Really? Okay. So now you get your patient and their their post op. Um, you know, you've gone through the initial thing. You know, what are we really recommending for that? Because it's a, you know, you, once you've had a knee injury or had knee surgery, having had that, it's, it's you know, you're looking at some, you're always aware of it the rest of your life. Um, right. uh, and, and we're, I'm going to, no, I'm going to feed you this line, but it's physical therapy being a key. Right. So if you want to get back to your, your pre-injury activities, which oftentimes include soccer and, and baseball and those kinds of things in the younger patients, then the physical therapy is really key. And I personally will examine a patient and make sure that they do have their full range of motion back, that they've got their strength back in their muscles, and make sure that they actually are ready to go back to that kind of activity. After a knee arthroscopy to get back to real high impact contact type sports, I usually say it's going to be you know, a couple of months because it takes that long to get your strength back. After an ACL, it's usually about six months for sports. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we certainly see that at the professional levels, and some of them at that level never really get back to what they were. And it's harder if the patient has any underlying arthritis. So if I'm seeing that 40 or 50 year old patient who had an injury, even if it was from soccer, if they've already started the process of arthritis, they're more likely to take a little bit longer to get over the swelling and the stiffness um, after surgery because of that arthritis. And I'll be more likely to recommend that they avoid the high impact exercise postoperatively. Yeah. Getting back to arthritis, it's, it's, I guess it is the fear of if, you, if you're a 20 year old having it or a 40 year old having it, what's the likelihood now? I've had my joint invaded. It's not a normal process. Um, it sets up issues that, that right. potentially could be pre-arthritic. Um, sort of a fear I had, and I'm sure that uh, people would have of even just having minor injuries. It's always hard to predict because every patient <clears throat> is different, but yes, losing part of your meniscus will increase the force across the joint in that area because it's a cushion. So um, if, the, if part of the meniscus is gone, then that area of the joint will be more likely to develop arthritis over time. Um, and the injury, if you have an injury severe enough to tear a ligament completely like the ACL, um, oftentimes there is subtle damage to the cartilage that may not be enough that it needs something surgically done to the cartilage or even that it's visible at the mm -hmm. time of the injury. But over time, those, those cartilage cells will die and, and, and you'll develop arthritis in that area. So it is incredibly common and I, I do always warn patients about it. Unfortunately, you know, when you're talking to a teenager to tell them that they might develop arthritis in 10 to 20 years, they're often not going to care. They yeah. still just want to play soccer. 20 years, my God, they're thinking 10, 20 days, really. Uh, it, it does beg the question why we don't, we, uh, uh, put, are there artificials for, for like the meniscus, for example, which is not uncommon, that we, we don't put something in there to cushion that, but we, we know we have some our Simvis and some of these drugs later on, but we don't do anything at the acute stage. There, there is a procedure for meniscus transplant if you've lost pretty much <coughs> the entire meniscus, but it's a, a cadaver tissue, and the issue primarily with that is sizing. The meniscus is very specific to the individual patient, has mm -hmm. to fit properly, and so it can be very difficult to size that, and it's a very big procedure to try to get that um, cartilage to heal back into a, another patient because it doesn't have a good blood supply. Um, it's still considered experimental by, in most 
uh, areas, although there definitely are um, surgeons performing that at some of the tertiary centers like Pittsburgh and Penn. Yeah. We um, did a, appreciate you coming here today. And I think uh, we always go to the take home message when we talk, Joy, is about prevention. Um, and we only have 30 seconds or so, but uh, again, re emphasizing flexibility and strength training. Yeah. And, uh, and really uh, trying to muscle strength and weight to, to a certain degree right yeah so we can take take that as a take-home message that's a good one to do. and stretch <laughs> stretch well, I, I realize that as I've gotten older that's probably the biggest thing I can do Dana, thanks for coming today I really You're appreciate welcome. it and thank you for watching Health Watch